So hello to Vienna. This is the first interview in this week um, to say hello to Vienna. So hello, Barbara. Hi, nice to meet you. And may I ask you to introduce yourself? Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, my name is Barbara busenich Pöltl. So I'm, uh, I'm the oldest of five siblings. So uh, maybe this is important as well when we come to improvisation. That's why I'm I, uh, uh, I tell you that too. And so what am I doing and why I'm here? So uh, my main role, I would say so, uh, and I have a lot of roles, uh, is that I'm a consultant, a systemic consultant for organizations. So I do organizational development at Beratergruppe Navaldex. Um, and there I'm focusing on change management transformations in organizations. Uh, and as well, I'm managing partner at, at Novadex, so I know uh, how it is to lead a company as well, uh, or lead, I would say, we are self-organized, um, so we have a lot of experience with holacracy, so uh, self-organization is something what is on a daily basis, how we lead the organization all together. Um, yeah, and this is also a big learning field and a role which is very interesting, uh, and we have talked a lot about it already, so uh, you know it. Um, yeah, and uh, I have other roles as well. So uh, especially the last years, I, I since then I'm an author of a book, so about moving organizations, where we are focusing on agile transformation and how you get more resistant or res resilient, I would say so, in crises and, and also at the complexity in the world. And at the same time, I do a lot of speaking um, as a speaker uh, about this topic. Uh, and as well, there I have a special topic about gender equality. So this is something which I, re with, which I really love um, to do, how you can uh, develop organizations um, on a structural basis. So this is where, where I'm focusing that. And yeah, and then I have some private roles as well. We have talked about it already. So I have a mother of two teenagers. So interesting, my... My girl uh, gets 17, has her birthday today, 17 today. So interesting time for me as well. <laughs> so these are my main roles, I would say so at the moment. That sounds like a, a moving life, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. So um, you said you're a, a self-organizing company and I heard, uh, you know, uh, holacracy and, and roles. Could you explain what that means for people who are not in self-organizing organizations? Yeah, what does it mean? So on one hand, I would say we are purpose-driven. So they, what leads us is our purpose um, um, and to bring this purpose into the world. This is on the one hand, I think, which is very important when you talk about self-organization. And the second thing is, so we distribute leadership uh, and power in our organizations to all the people uh, who are in the organization. So uh, it means we are, have a lot of roles and each role uh, has uh, the power to lead, I would say so, in a different way. And we are really practicing on a daily basis, I would say so, uh, how you come into the roles, how you uh, um, execute them, how to prioritize what is the best next step. Um, so this is something what I th where I think this is really important. And this is also a topic of today. Maybe not we are not focusing self-organization, but what you learn in self-organization is how to deal with roles and how to switch roles. And I think that we are already in the topic, it's a, into the topic itself, what it is about. And agile transformation is a part of it. So um, that's an important part. And Honestly speaking, it's really always, we learn a lot every day, I would say, so uh, we what you cannot expect. Yeah. So it's a really new experience where I would say, think leadership in that way is totally different as you have done it the last past 150 years. So it's less hierarchical, but you have to learn how to deal with stuff in another way. So a challenging. Chat. Yeah, so so in, in chess sometimes they say um, it's um, it's a minimal structure. So there is a, a freedom within structure. So there are, there are some clear roles or genres in, in chess, but then you have the full autonomy, and it sounds a bit like that. So are, are there similarities in in what is is clear and fixed and and what is open? Definitely, um, there, uh, especially in holacracy, so there are different uh, models how you can organize your organization in a self-organizational way. <laughs> so, 
Uh, but in Holacracy, you have a constitution where all the rules you have to apply in the organizations are really written down and you have to underwrite it. So it's like contract. Um, and they, these are the basics, how you, how you deal in your organization, especially there are special meetings, how you deal in roles, which kind of domains and, and accountabilities you have in your roles and how you we call it how you process it. This means how you develop it on an ongoing basis, because this is something what is key in self-organization that you develop on an on a ongoing basis. So uh, to the changing environment and as well, the things where uh, you, you see and you need to adapt. And it sounds to me that, that you yourself tried out, you experiment that and I guess then you, you try to also uh, support other organizations yes, to, yes. to have this transformation. So you mentioned agile transformation. So, so why do organizations need this agile transformation from your point of view? Um, this is something what we, where we were really focusing in our book as well. So we think agile transformation is the answer of uh, adapting to the complexity in this world. So organizations now have really a lot of challenges. They have, they have had them in the past as well. But at the moment, the complexity uh, and the digitalization is going faster and faster. And the, the structure from the hand past 200 years does not support this kind of ability um, to really adapt on this on an ongoing basis and that's why uh, from our point of view organization really need a, needs a game changer how they organize themselves and the agile transformation is really focusing on which kind of abilities uh, does an organization need. And we think it's uh, agility, but not just methods. It's about really finding a new way to operate as an organization and really to adapt on these ongoing change, changing things. And this is really also a challenge, I would say, so for the people who are in the organization, because um, the whole structure, you know, does not work anymore or the most the most of the time yeah. so it sounds to me like a, a real change so not just you know change a bit or there's a merger or different branding but as you say it's the way to operate yes. and um, when you're saying like the last more or less 200 years there's organization more in a hierarchical perspective and now to, to change it to a more agile or adaptive system how do you do that i mean this is it sounds like a lot of effort <laughs> Yeah. where you have to, to, to bear in mind all these different aspects like organizational conditions and mindsets and, and skills from em employees and so on. So, so how do you start this, this transformational journey? Yeah, but I, I think um, especially, I think this is a good, a good uh, question because a lot of peop, uh, organizations are at a, a current status, you know, and they, they now know how to, they should change, but how to. And um, I think the, the, the good thing is that you, you just can start. Uh, at a specific point and the other day the other hand is if it is a real agile transformation you really have to uh, adapt on every level in your organization so each uh, the roles the areas and how you can do that we have found nine levers um, um, how you you can approach it for example how you uh, uh, deal with decisions or how you uh, use your culture as a point of reference and, and what you would like to change or how you uh, deal with roles, for example. So we have found nine levers where we say, there you can start. Um, it's a starting point and um, then you can uh, check uh, what is the next step, I would say so. So we really try to bring it uh, to more slices, I would say, so you, that, that you can eat it easier. Yeah, so that, that is the approach. And then the other hand, if the pressure is really, really high, so some organizations really have to adapt very fast, then you have to deal with all these levers and, and at the same time. And this is a quite a challenge because then uh, we, we would say then it's a real transformation because then you have to change completely. We, we, we sometimes have, have the butterfly in our mind um, because at the beginning, the butterfly definitely looks completely different than at the end. And so it's like transformation in organizations. So it's really, you are different organizations, a different system afterwards. 
Yesterday we heard the topic of um, decisions in uncertainty, and then you also mentioned decisions. So how? So if if I have the idea of a hierarchical organization, then it's clear that um, you know the boss um, you know has the decision, and the others you know operate in a very trivialized world. What what kind of decision is possible in a self-organized or transformed uh, organization? Do they always have to talk to each other all the time before they make a decision? Or how can you decide in uncertainty and in such a complex environment? Yeah, the thing is that you distribute the decisions to the roles. So you need to know who is the expert for the decisions. And then you, you enable the people that they can decide in their roles. What means that you have to realize um, in which situation, who is the expert in which situation, you know, and then step back, go forward and and that the thing is you always clarify who is responsible at the moment. Yeah, this is something on an ongoing basis where there are extra meetings, we call it governance meetings, where we clarify uh, who is accountable for what. And uh, uh, this is an important process in the organizations because you have, you know, the last week that I thought I have a very small decision and I thought, okay, we do it like that. And I have to integrate the uh, um, tensions. So I have to ask one or two roles if they have tensions when I decide that this is something we have processed as well. And then it was about clarifying for five hours what it is about, because this, I would say, is the difference to main organizations. So the leader can decide and everyone has to take that, uh, what I say. And there, the difference is that I really have to think about what is it about. So you, 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 you have to clarify what is the decision. And on the other hand, that if you have clarified it once, the next time it goes very fast and everyone can decide on that. So, uh, but the, in, at the beginning, it's really about so what it is about, really, and go down and deep and deep and get a better understanding how decisions are made. And I think this is a very interesting process to realize how, how decisions are distributed in your organization. Let's assume that um, you work with a company over perhaps a year or two, and they, they really transformed to an agile organization. Um, what is the difference if I see here, you know, the hierarchical organization and, and here uh, the, 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 the transformed organization? Uh, what is the difference from, from your point of view? Um, that they, on the one hand, they, they, they act faster. So decisions are made faster. Uh, they are in a way in a prototype. They always prototyping something because they have to adapt and learn from, from the market, from their, their clients. This, this is something you really can see. What is also different is from my perspective that the teams are more different, you know, there are different perspectives, a different person, they are uh, uh, interpersonal uh, relations as well. So there are a lot of differences in the teams and they are moving as well. So there are no, there, there are less constant teams, I would say so. And then the same time, the, uh, a very big difference is that maybe it's not that clear who, who is the leader. Yeah, you not realize it at the first moment. Um, um, uh, after an agile organization. So uh, if you lo look at them from the outside and what else is different? Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the main things which are different. So um, I really, ah, yes. And there is more in, uh, 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 communication. So they, that, they, there is more talking how, how we do that. So, so it's more common that, that, uh, uh, that you get in contact with other areas in the organization as well. So if I imagine myself such, such a condition, what kind of skills and mindsets are helpful in these environments to decide faster, to communicate more, to have specific roles? What, you, what would you expect from employees or what do they need um, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to work in this environment? The, the, the funny thing is when we come to that point, we always say we take the rules of the improvisation theater because um, um, that's that this is what we are training with the people as well. Because um, what I would say is as a person in an agile organization, you have a lot of P2 opportunities. On the one hand, things to learn and, and, and very interesting. And on the other hand, it's really also 
yeah, a challenging because you always have different situations and there you need to be present in the situation or in the role. You, you have to switch roles very fast. So you need to learn how to be present in a role, how to focus, how to switch uh, 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 in, in, in different situations into different roles, as well uh, uh, dealing with mistakes and errors. Um, if you prototype something and you always uh, discuss about errors a lot or you, 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 you have not the chance to discuss it because you're afraid of it. So this is a big difference. So this is very important. So we have to, to, to work on the failure culture and the mistake culture a, a lot as well. So this is something, especially I would say in Austria and, and Germany is a hard thing because they are very precise and, 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 and there are no mistakes very often in organizations or they're not allowed, let's say it that way. So failure culture is something uh, uh, what we have to focus as well a lot. And yeah, there are a lot of exercises we, we do with them and how you can apply that in your daily life. So there are a lot of things you have to learn there. And what is important from my perspective is that you as a person have always a, a, a a home base so where you know where you are connected with people uh, and that's why we also invest more in in the social aspect we call that tribe space um, in, in self-organization so that where people connect where people have uh, reflect about their collaborations how it works and how they can develop because this is very important as well. <laughs> 